Hey guys, uh, Nelson Cuesta here from agentfire.com. So if you're like me and you've tried searching for articles or videos on real estate marketing strategies for Facebook and Google, you already know that it's, it's pretty slim pickings. Uh, everything that I found, and believe me, I looked, seemed to be pretty much just vapid, superficial type content with vague suggestions and limited to no supporting evidence. So in this video and accompanying article, I'm gonna give you something very different than what you're used to. My goal here is to basically create the definitive case study for how to generate maximum ROI for real estate using Facebook and Google marketing. Just pure, unadulterated value. Now, if you get to the end of this video and you feel like you're not walking away with multiple gems that have the potential to dramatically improve your online real estate marketing, then I will personally bake and mail you a cookie as long as you pay the shipping and handling. Now, with all that said, shall we begin? So I first had the idea to create this case study a few months back. Anyone that knows me knows that I love a good challenge. My life is basically one big challenge. I'm currently making a documentary about my relentless but measured approach to achieving my utmost potential in my physical, mental, business, expressive, and second language capacities. So I, I couldn't just make a simple case study. Instead, I needed a really challenging scenario. And here it is. We decided that we would take a budget of $2,500 in a time frame of two months and challenge ourselves to generate the highest ROI possible using Google and Facebook marketing. In other words, here's 2,500 bucks. You've got two months to generate the most ROI that you can go. Now, did I mention that I like challenges? So to make this even more interesting, we decided to pick a client from one of the most competitive markets in the entire USA. Meet Janie Howard. She's a really good human being and she's also the owner of Woodleaf Realty, a small brokerage located in the ultra competitive market of Colorado Springs, Colorado. Janie's overall experience when it comes to online marketing and ad spend is very reminiscent to what I've heard over the last year from practically every agent that I've discussed online marketing with. Let me know if this sounds familiar to you. Doesn't really know where to start when it comes to marketing their website, spent money on Zillow and not happy with the ROI, and then mixed to little results in other online marketing attempts. Now, despite her best efforts to generate leads for her team, Janie was simply not finding success. By the way, if you want more insight into her overall experience with us, you can check out her full review on our Facebook business page. Janie's two websites are woodleafrealty.com, which we used for this case study, and more recently, coloradospringsmilitaryhomes.com, which we launched after the success of the campaigns that we'll be discussing in this article. That website also may be the subject of another case study like this one, if enough people ask for it. Anyway, more on that at the end of this video. So let's get you a quick overview of our final results before we dive into things. With the $2,500 budget that we had to work with, $2,300 we allocated to Facebook marketing. From that, we were able to generate over 768 leads with some other pretty insane stats. 38 cent cost per click, $2.98 cent cost per lead, and a 3.6% click-through rate. In this snapshot, we're showing our overall results for Facebook ads, which actually span over 14 different campaigns, including campaigns where tweaks were made. The remaining part of the budget, $200, we allocated to Google Remarketing. There, we were able to generate 472 clicks at 44 cents per click. This was all done in just a two month span. Now, based on all of the closed deals that we've been able to link directly to these campaigns, Janie and her team have been able to close over $50,000 in net profits from real estate commissions. That represents a 20 times ROI. And what's more, this number does not include profits from new deals over the next months and years that Janie will close thanks to carefully executed drip email and remarketing campaigns. So when everything is all said and done, the actual ROI will be even higher. Now let's talk about how we researched for these campaigns. Colorado Springs is a very interesting market in that it's got a very wide range, demographically speaking. You've got first time home buyers, new construction, people looking to upsize, people looking to downsize, and military relocation, just to name a few. Given that we ourselves were not familiar with the area, I think it made sense that the first thing we'd do was to sit down with Janie to discuss her market and to get a general idea of where she felt the best opportunities might be. After gaining insights and understanding about the market from Janie herself, we did some keyword research as well as some competitor research to see what other agents in the area were really getting busy with with their online marketing. Pro tip, your goal when doing research should never just be explicitly to get a list of keywords to target. Instead, it should be to identify where the real opportunities are within your market and to develop a plan of attack on how to best capitalize on them. Here's how we did that with Janie's market. For keyword research, my favorite tool is SEMrush, without question. It gives you info for both PPC and organic traffic and can help identify both short and long tail keyword opportunities. Now, that's a paid tool, so if you wanna use a free tool, my recommendation for that is just to use Google's Keyword Planner. Once we had a list of keywords and phrases we felt represented the best ROI opportunities, it was time to check out the competition a bit. 
To check out competitors, we used a tool called Spyfu. If you've never heard of this, you now at least owe me a cup of coffee. What we love to do when working on a campaign is to first check out what savvy local area competitors are doing with their PPC keywords. SpyFu delivers all of that information on a silver platter. So if you've got a savvy competitor that's absolutely killing it with their online marketing, you can check out not only which keywords they're using, but roughly how much budget they're allocating to those keywords. I think it's generally pretty fair to infer that if a competitor is dumping a massive amount of coin into a specific keyword or set of keywords, it's probably because it's working for them. Guys, this is my top piece of advice when it comes to formulating the initial strategy for your own campaigns. Here's an example of the sort of valuable information that SpyFu gives you, using one of Austin's top brokerages as an example. Now, as you can see here, they're putting a lot of budget and have a high cost per click on Condos Austin. So I would venture to guess that it's very likely that keyword is paying major dividends. Now, the other possible scenario here that you have to be careful to watch out for is that your competitors may have no idea what the hell they're doing and are just arbitrarily dumping massive amounts of dollars into a campaign, just hoping for a positive result. That may sound like a joke, but this actually happens a lot, like literally 50% of the time. Uh, this is why I said to focus on savvy local area competitors. If you're checking out PPC for Brenda, the local agent who built up a massive referral network but doesn't know how to text message, who's now running her own online marketing campaigns, don't expect to find any gems. SpyFu isn't free, but if you're gonna be running your own campaigns, I can't recommend it enough, even if it's just for this one feature. So after doing our research and considering everything, we determined that to start, we were gonna focus on two individual niche markets that we felt represented the best opportunity to generate high ROI. So those markets were people looking to downsize and first time home buyers. We also decided that the best platform to attack these niches was Facebook, which we'll explain here in a second. First, here's a macro level overview of the exact formula that we used to generate massive ROI for Janie. It's also what we feel confidently is the best way to find success specifically with Facebook focused marketing. Step one, identify your niche target market. Step two, create a Facebook ad. Step three, create the landing page that prospects land on after clicking your ad. Step four, create the offer page that prospects get access to after opting in on your landing page. Step five, immediate follow-up. Step six, 12 month drip email sequence. Step seven, six months of Google and Facebook retargeting ads. Does that sound like a lot? Because it's really not. And to help you out, we're gonna break down each individual step for you and go into vivid detail. And here's the cool thing. Once you get into the swing of things, each of these individual steps could be set up and repeated for different target niche markets in just a few minutes. Rinse and repeat. So let's go ahead now and show you exactly how we applied this formula to Jamie's first campaign, the downsizing campaign, step by step. Step one. Identify a niche market that you can target. Every real estate market is different and each one of them has their own unique opportunities. Now, when I say niche, what I'm referring to is anything deeper than buyer or seller. Niche markets could include looking to downsize or upsize, first time home buyers, new construction, school districts, relocation, second home markets, golf homes, the list goes on and on. One of the great things about Facebook marketing in particular is that it allows you to target users on an unprecedented level. There are diamonds here just waiting to be discovered. So as an example, without a doubt, the most niche campaign that we're currently running for our client right now involves targeting families from South America who have relocated to the Washington DC area for technology jobs that are looking to buy. That's pretty niche. This level of niche is entirely possible with Facebook marketing. In Janie's case, we determined that the looking to downsize market was a great one for us to target because Colorado Springs has a large population of middle-aged homeowners living in homes that they no longer need, mainly because their children have already left the nest. It's also a great first-time homebuyers market. With a niche market selected, next you need to figure out how you're gonna target them. And this is where Facebook ads truly shine. They give you tons of fantastic demographic targeting options that will allow you to really zero in on your target niche. For our downsizing campaign, we determined that the people we wanted to see our ads most likely met the following criteria. 55 years old, homeowner for over six years, and their children have left the house. Now, here's exactly what we targeted in Facebook. First, basic targeting. For location, we targeted our ads to a plus 10 mile radius of Colorado Springs. For age, we targeted 55 and up, since we're targeting a downsizing demographic, which tends to be an older group. And for language, we targeted everyone that speaks English, 
If you're bilingual, you should definitely target any additional languages that you speak. Now, here are all of the include targeting methods that we used, meaning criteria that we included, along with a short explanation of each one. From the residential profiles length of residence category, we targeted six plus years. Given that we're targeting downsizers, we figured that anyone that's been living in a home for less than six years is gonna be much less likely to sell. According to the National Association of Home Builders, the average buyer stays in their home for an average of 13 years. From the home, home ownership category, we targeted homeowners. We obviously want to target people that own homes. And lastly, and this one depends on your market and who you're trying to target, from the home, home type, home value category, we chose to target people whose home values were in excess of $500,000. Advanced targeting excludes. Now, here are all of the exclusions that we set up, meaning that users that met this criteria, we excluded from our target audience. From residential profiles, we excluded new mover and recent home buyers. Again, since we're targeting people looking to downsize, we don't want to be targeting anyone that has recently purchased a home. From the home, home ownership category, we excluded renters. You can't sell a home that you're renting. Then from the home household composition category, we excluded young adults in home. Since our ideal market consists of older homeowners whose children have left the nest. So I have to mention two other targeting options that we did not use in these campaigns, but are worth knowing. First is the likely to move option, which may come as a surprise that we did not use. For whatever reason, we've almost always had better success not using it. I wish I had a better explanation, but I don't. Definitely A-B test it for yourself as your results may be different. I also have to mention income and net worth. Financial targeting like income and net worth have also been invaluable with most of the campaigns that we've run. However, for the downsizing market, these options weren't as important. Also FYI, Google AdWords does allow you to target by income. The only difference is that with Google, you're targeting by percentile in regards to highest and lowest incomes. Step two, make your offer an IDX results page and call it a list. Now, while we have had a lot of success for campaigns offering guides, buyer seller rebates, or other methods, these are a bit more involved to get set up. If you're looking for a high value campaign that can be set up in minutes, one of the easiest and most effective ways to create an offer with high ROI is to simply use a curated IDX results page. For our downsizing market, we achieved this by offering a list of all of the single story homes for sale in the area. To do this, using Janie's IDX, we simply created a saved search with the following criteria. Property feature, one level, AKA single story homes. Location, Colorado Springs. That's pretty easy, no? Step three, create compelling ads. Now here are our first set of ads for the looking to downsize campaigns that we ran. We decided to go with a Facebook carousel ad. This ad type allows you to show up to 10 images or videos along with headlines, links, and call to action on individual cards. We chose this format because we had many different value points that we wanted to feature in our ads and a carousel format allows us to succinctly feature a different value point on each individual card. As you can see from these ads, some of those points were our list of single story homes. This is the main value offer for our target market that we've created a ready-made list of single story homes that's ready for them to view. So it was important that we feature that in the actual copy for our ads. Updated every 15 minutes. So Janie's IDX, Showcase IDX, updates their results every 15 minutes or so, which is actually a huge advantage over other MLSs and portal sites like Zillow. We wanted to feature that as a value point, knowing that consumers always want the most up-to-date information. Sign up for updates. We understood that many of the people seeing our ads are not quite ready to pull the trigger, and so for that reason, we wanted to advertise as a value point that you'd be able to sign up for daily or weekly updates. We also tested a number of different ad texts. For carousel ads, ad text is the short paragraph above the carousel portion. Our goal here was to simply present our offer, our list of ranch homes, in a way that effectively resonates with our target audience. So as you can see via the carousel ad example, we didn't need to do any fancy design work. We simply found some good looking single story photos of homes that Jenny has listed in the past and used those. However, sometimes you wanna create something a little fancier, a little sexier like these ads. So let's talk about how to create your own ads. And I have two recommendations for you. First is fiverr.com. Do a search for Facebook image ad, click social media design from the refined results list, and you'll find tons of great gigs where you can get quality images created for your ads for as little as five bucks. Next up, for those who wanna create their own ads is canva.com. It's really simple and you can take pre-existing templates, swap out the background image, adjust the text, and in just a few minutes, you've got an ultra professional looking ad. Now let's talk about A-B testing. If you're gonna truly get the most out of AdWords and Facebook marketing ads, you need to A-B test. I know this sounds scary, now let me show you exactly why it's not. 
Between my company and our clients, I've personally managed over 300K in ad spend. And even with all that experience, I still routinely see statistically significant results that make my head spin. One example of this, and this I, I gave previously, is how we've had better results generating seller leads when not using the likely to move Facebook targeting option. What works in one area may not work nearly as well in another. Desktop ads may convert better in some areas and mobile in other areas. Males may convert better than females and vice versa. So A-B testing is really important and again, it's easier than you think. At the most basic level, you could simply launch two or three campaigns with different headlines, ad texts, and images. Then once you have some data, i.e. 50 total conversions, you can start to see which campaigns are clearly doing better than others lower cost per click, lower cost per conversion, higher click-through rates, etc. Then you can just put more budget into the stuff that's working best. Here at AgentFire, we use an awesome tool called AdExpresso. AdExpresso's base price is 49 bucks a month and it covers the needs of 99% of the people watching this video, up to a $3,000 a month ad budget. If you're gonna be going to war with Facebook ads, it's a weapon you should absolutely be armed with. Here's a screenshot of a recent campaign we launched for Janie using AdExpresso. As you can see here, we're testing two headlines, two ad texts, and three ad images. Looks really easy, right? Then, when you've got all of your different variations set, you simply publish and AdExpresso will actually mix and match all of those different variations to create individual ads using every possible combination. So in this example, two times two times three equals 12 different ad variations, all published with just a single click of a button. AdExpresso will then track each of those 12 ad variations and show you individual stats for each one so you'll know exactly which ones are working and which ones aren't. The keys to compelling ads. As far as selecting your ad image and writing the copy for your ad, don't overthink it. Your ads should try to achieve a pretty even mix of all of the following. Grab attention. Always use a relevant image that's likely to stand out. Value proposition. Once you've got their attention, you need to create an enticing enough of an offer to get them to click, but make sure it's value based and not spammy crap. Don't advertise something like the secret to getting top dollar for your home and then just link to a 250 character article that you copied from Inman about why they need to work with a real estate agent. You're just gonna make people angry. Pain points. So every single niche market is gonna have multiple pain points. For example, with our first time homebuyer campaigns, we know that finding homes near top school districts is generally a pain point. So we leverage that into the copy slash offer. Be personal. Seriously, make sure that you sound like a down to earth human and not a used car salesman. Okay, now this is a fun one, emoji power. Fun fact, in all of the A-B tests that we ran where one ad copy had emojis and the other didn't, the ad with emojis converted better. So if you wanna quickly sprinkle emojis into your ad copy, check out emojipedia.com where you can search every emoji known to man. When you find the ones you like, just copy and paste. Step four, create a simple landing page. The landing page is the page that users are directed to after they've clicked onto one of your ads. The goal of the landing page is for the user to enter their contact information in exchange for whatever you're offering. So in this case, we're offering a list of single story homes in Colorado Springs. Now we've tested many different landing pages for Jamie's campaigns, here are some examples. This is one of the first landing pages that we tested. We actually ran two versions of this, one without the personalized message at the top and one with the personalized message. The one with the personalized message actually converted better. Here, we tested the same personalized message, but with different font weights and a Facebook button instead of form fields. Here, we tested a much more streamlined landing page, a strong headline text, and a Facebook button. And here is the final evolution of the landing page and the one that converted the best. We think this was due to the personalized message, leveraging pain and value points, but in a way that didn't draw attention away from the opt-in form for users who just wanted to move directly to the list. How to create a landing page. So here at Agentfire, we just use AF Lead Pages. It's our killer real estate landing page solution, which allows you to create and deploy high converting landing pages that are completely optimized for Facebook and Google marketing in just a few clicks. Our sites also seamlessly integrate with leading third-party CRMs like LionDesk and Follow-Up Bus. So of course, to create killer landing pages, my top recommendation is for you to just sign up and see for yourself why this is just one of the many industry leading features that made us the top publicly reviewed real estate solution of all of 2017. <coughs> Does that count as a sales pitch? <laughs> but just in case for some odd reason you don't wanna sign up, then I do have a couple of pretty good alternatives to recommend. Now, the top three landing page builders in the world, you've probably heard of them, are Leap Pages, Instapage, and Unbounce. As for my personal favorite, definitely instapage.com. Now, in my most recent visit to Instapage's website, I wasn't able to find a way to filter by real estate, but if you check their lead generation templates, you'll find tons of great real estate landing pages. Now, for the same monthly price as Instapage, you could just sign up for AgentFire and get tons of real estate optimized landing pages along with a drop-dead gorgeous website loaded with tons of other features, but I digress. 
Should you require phone numbers on your landing pages? Now this is probably the question I get the most when it comes to setting up landing pages and the answer really depends on you. The reality is that no matter how you slice it, you will get fewer people that opt in on your landing pages if you require a phone number. However, in Janie's case, having phone numbers was a critical part of her follow-up process, so we did require them. In other campaigns that we've launched, where we've also had really well-crafted drip email sequences, more on that later, we've seen great results as well. One important note is that if your landing pages are using Facebook or Google logins, you won't be able to capture phone numbers. Unless. So here at Agent Fire, <laughs> okay, this is the last sales pitch, I promise. We've developed a great workaround to that problem. We've built out a two-step social login to phone number setting so that when users opt in on your forms via Facebook or Google, we then reveal a second step to collect their phone number. Even if they don't enter their phone number, we've already captured their name and email in the first step. Eh, let's be honest, that's pretty cool. Step five, immediate friendly follow-up. So admittedly, I'm not an expert here, so I reached out to Janie for some pointers and she provided some real gems, which I'll give to you now. Follow up immediately. Reaching out to a fresh lead within minutes will almost always trump what you say. In other words, if you respond immediately and it's a legitimate buyer, it almost doesn't matter what you say. If you can't do that, then you should leverage scripts that involve asking questions and offering value. Use scripts. Okay, so don't literally have a script in front of you that you're reading verbatim, but rather develop some sort of intelligent, repeatable approach to how you're gonna be following up with leads depending on the sort of campaign that you're running. A quick Google search for real estate scripts will reveal all sorts of great ideas that you can use or incorporate into your own. Don't be a salesman, show that you care. In Janie's words, People don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. Introduce yourself in a nice friendly voice and establish very quickly that your objective is not just to secure new business, but rather to provide any sort of value that you possibly can. Face to face. If you get the opportunity, set a face to face appointment. The sooner you can transition from unknown phone voice to in-person human, the better. Automated personalization. Admittedly, I had some fun with that title, but basically what we're saying here is make sure you leverage CRMs, drip emails, and set reminders to follow up so that you're constantly nurturing leads in a non-sales way. Step six, drip email. A strong follow-up or drip email sequence is a critical piece of the conversion pie. Drip emails are an automated sequence of emails usually spaced out over days, weeks, and months that you begin to send once you receive the lead information. Our current favorite CRM is LionDesk, and that's the CRM that we use for all of Janie's lead management and drip email. By the way, guys, and I think now is as good a time as ever to mention this, uh, we do not have any sort of business arrangement with LionDesk. In fact, of all the companies that I mentioned in this video, the only one that we've got an affiliate relationship with is Showcase IDX. Now, back to CRM. As far as LionDesk goes, seriously, there is no other CRM in the market that provides more bang for the buck. For a single agent, you're looking at 25 bucks a month. Seriously, they rock and our clients absolutely love them too. For Janie's campaigns, we set up a 12-month drip email sequence, which we do and recommend for all of our campaigns. For the first week or so, we're sending roughly an email a day, and then from there, the campaign becomes much less aggressive. Every single email tries to provide value in some way. Here's a quick sampling of what some of those emails that we set up for the single story drip campaign look like. Here, you can see the first bunch of emails in the sequence, as well as the subject line for each one, and the frequency that we set these emails to send. In the early goings of the drip, we generally space our emails one to two days apart, and then after five to seven days, we start to send much less frequently so that we're not spamming people. Guys, extremely important make sure that your drip emails are not spammy. So over the last few years, I've been in contact with literally thousands of agents, and very often I find myself enrolled into their drip emails. It never ceases to amaze me the sort of absolute crap that some agents send out. I think most agents have it in their head that it's better to reach out and touch someone with something than with nothing, and I can assure you, if the stuff that you're sending is generic, templated crap that you yourself would delete with anger if it found its way into your inbox, well, I'll just let you process that. Now, that being said, when it comes to drip email, you have to consider what your objectives are. Here are what mine would be, and I'll keep this real short. Stay top of mind, offer and provide value, demonstrate expertise, sound like I wrote the email myself, even though I've got it on autopilot, and to show enough personality to stand out and maybe crack a smile. People want to do business with nice people, and a little personality does wonders to break down barriers. So here's a good example of a really successful drip email that I set up for an ebook download campaign. See that cute kitten photo? Guaranteed to put a smile on your face, and a perfect example of the sort of personalization that you yourself should aim for in your own drip. Now, also worth mentioning when it comes to drip emails, Listing alerts. Similar to drip campaigns, listing alerts can send automatic emails to people who subscribe to your email list and are a great tool, especially for clients who are in the market to buy. So for our clients, this is mostly done through our preferred IDX, Showcase IDX. 
Again, full disclosure, we've got an affiliate relationship with them, but seriously, they're the best IDX available for WordPress, hands down. When visitors are searching for properties on an AgentFire website using Showcase IDX, they can be prompted to sign up for email alerts on specific listings or property searches that they set up. These alerts and updates can be set at specific intervals that suit your preferences, i.e. daily, weekly, monthly. Showcase IDX actually also has an instant notification feature, which is absolutely killer. Also, here's a pro tip. You should periodically scan the list of prospects that you have receiving listing alerts and just reach out with a personalized email about a property or a small group of properties that you think that this person would love based on the criteria that they have in their safe searches. So if you see someone has created a safe search for Bethel School Districts, why not reach out directly with a property or properties you think represent great value in that area? Step seven, Google remarketing. So a quick editor's note, uh, we did all of our remarketing through Google only, since at the time, we just didn't have much experience with Facebook remarketing. And we don't wanna waste any of our limited budget testing stuff when we knew we could generate definite results through Google. If we had to go back in time, we'd definitely use a mix of both. Okay. <sighs> So we're gonna be going into pretty heavy detail here as well. If you're watching this video in one shot, now may be a good time to grab some more coffee. I'm also gonna make a very strong statement. I believe that used properly, remarketing on Google and or Facebook represents the absolute highest ROI possible that you will see for your marketing dollars. So that being said, let's first look at how Google remarketing works. Basically, someone comes to your website and they either perform a desired action, like filling out a form, or they don't. Generally, with how remarketing works, you wanna to try to target the visitors that didn't convert into a lead. So in those cases, a tracking cookie gets installed and that user will then continue to see advertisements for you and your website that hopefully bring them back to your website and do result in a conversion. So let's explain this in real basic terms. If you don't have remarketing set up, 98% of all website visitors that visit your website are not gonna convert into a lead. So without remarketing, once that visitor is gone, they're gone forever. Now, if you do have remarketing set up, that 98% of visitors that didn't convert are now gonna see your advertisements, follow them around the internet for a period of up to 180 days, which is a massive second opportunity. By the way, important note, what we're talking about here is all website traffic. Obviously, as you can see in the case of Janie's campaigns, if you're running a targeted ad and landing page, you're gonna have much higher conversion rates. Ours were closer to 14% and would have been even higher if we didn't require phone numbers. Bottom line, every real estate website should have remarketing set up and running. Now, let me give you the reasons for remarketing and bear with me, folks, I need to really hammer in how important this is. It's unbelievably cheap. I kind of hate saying that since I do believe that in life you generally get what you pay for, like IKEA furniture, which has never lasted me more than a year. Anyway, with all marketing, the cost is generally a confluence of numerous factors. One of the biggest ones is how competitive the keyword or ad space is. With Facebook marketing, you can target people based on their interests, likes, age, etc. This is casting a pretty wide net. With Google AdWords, you can target people based on keywords, zip codes, or areas. This is generally casting a decently wide net. With Facebook and Google remarketing, you can target the exact people that visited your website. You're not casting a net, you're using a sniper rifle. By only marketing to such a select group, your cost will be absolute peanuts in the scheme of things. So if you have a killer website that's built to convert, then it makes absolute sense to try to get as many of your visitors back to your website as possible. Second chances. Now, as I just mentioned, the vast majority of people who visit your website for the first time, up to 98%, are not gonna turn into a lead. Remarketing gives you a very inexpensive way to get a second crack at them. Branding and the subconscious. If your ads are following people around as they browse the web, you're branding yourself and you're forming a positive subconscious association with the people seeing them. What type of impression you will leave will depend on the actual ad itself, as well as how frequently you show it. We've got a client here that has such aggressive remarketing that I literally see his ads hundreds of times a day. I've literally <laughs> never seen anything like it. So at first I thought this was a really poor use of budget, but now I'm actually starting to rethink things. Like I, I literally see his ads in my dreams. Like this morning I was looking at a cereal box and it turned into his ad. He's become the subject of numerous memes in our company's Slack channels. We actually had another client write in who said they visited his website and I quote, now cannot seem to escape him. Now, whether that's good or bad, that's all pretty powerful, no? Be ready when they're ready. We all know that the buying and selling process can be a long one. So a very common scenario is that someone visits your website during the initial stages of their search and then clicks onto one of your real estate retargeting ads a month later or two months later and actually turns into a lead or deal at that point. Retarget with a different offer. So let's say someone visited your website because you were running an ad on Facebook for new construction properties in a specific neighborhood. Maybe you got 5,000 clicks to that page on your website. You can now target those 5,000 people with a different but relevant offer. For example, you could target them with a 
interested in new construction, sign up for my top 10 list. Or I'm a new construction expert, let's grab coffee and talk new construction real estate. Okay, here's how you can order really nice ads in less than five minutes for about five bucks. So I've already mentioned this website previously. If you need gorgeous remarketing ads created quickly and on the cheap, check out fiverr.com. Do a search for remarketing ads, Google remarketing, Facebook retargeting ads, and you'll see all sorts of gigs that pop up. Pro tip, so for Google remarketing, you should go with what are called HTML5 ads. All this means is that your ads will be animated instead of static. Here's a quick example of one of the HTML5 ads we created for Janie's campaigns. So which sizes to order your ads? For Google specifically, you're gonna to need to know which ad sizes you want created. Here's my recommendations, which are based on which ad sizes have historically converted the best. 250 by 250 square, 200 by 200 small square, 468 by 60 banner, 728 by 90 leaderboard, 300 by 250 inline rectangle, 336 by 280 large rectangle. Now this list includes mobile optimized sizes as well. I'll link to the full article for this video in the description, so don't worry if you didn't commit that to memory. Brand remarketing. So when it comes to remarketing, my recommendation is to start with some simple brand remarketing. This basically revolves around creating ads that communicate hyper-local area expertise and or social proof. Now, later on, if you wanna get more advanced with your remarketing, you can run some campaigns that are focused on some sort of secondary offer. So brand remarketing is remarketing with the objective of creating awareness and positive sentiment towards your brand. Secondary offer remarketing would be offering something like a free buyer guide type ad to people who have visited IDX pages on your website. Ad frequency and duration. So when setting up your remarketing ads, two of the most important decisions you're gonna to have to make are how many times per day you wanna show your ads and for what duration of time you wanna show your ads. My recommendation would be to show your ads at least once per day for a period of about six months. Now, I used to be under the impression that you shouldn't spam your ads, but I'm slowly starting to change my position on that. Now that's because remarketing is just so cheap, comparatively speaking, and good brand remarketing should effectively cement the association, the relationship between you and real estate that your site visitors have in their head. So maybe showing your ads with more frequency isn't a bad idea. So you should just experiment with different ad display frequencies yourself to see which works best. Also, gorgeous ads are cheap if you order them through Fiverr, and so to keep your ads from becoming Becoming repetitive, I highly recommend having multiple ad sets created and then just switching them up every month or two. And guys, you need to A, B test your remarketing ads as well. When you're getting ads created, you'll often have the option to include a few minor variations. You should have some fun and test here. In this example, you'll see that we tested using Discover and Learn More for the button CTA. And it turned out that Discover got more clicks at a lower cost. So looking back, what would we have done differently? Well, I don't think there's much that we would have done differently, but I'll mention two things. First, Google AdWords. I do think that under normal circumstances, i.e. not a fixed budget in a two month time frame, what makes most sense if you're gonna be setting up your own campaigns is to actually start with Google AdWords. It's more predictable and easier to reliably produce results, especially in the early goings. Once you find keywords and landing page combinations that you're really hitting on, I think that's when you should start diving into some of the niche type stuff on Facebook. Google remarketing secondary offer. The Google remarketing that we did for Janie's campaigns was general branding, which is great and definitely worked very well. However, I would have loved to test a little bit more secondary offer type stuff. So an example would have been for anyone that visited the first time homebuyer landing pages to have done remarketing with an ad graphic and a landing page offering a free first time homebuyer in-person consultation or something along those lines. So I have to mention, if you're in the market for a cutting edge real estate website, why not quickly check out our complete tour overview video on agentfire.com tour and see for yourself all of the great ways that an Agentfire website can improve your brand and hyperlocal presence, help you generate more leads and close more deals. I started this company in my parents' basement back in 2013, and heading into 2018, we're now a team of 30 plus with hundreds of satisfied clients across the US and Canada. We were also the top publicly reviewed real estate solution of all of 2017, and that's based on all available public reviews with a minimum of 50 reviews. Our product has never been better and the best is yet to come. Brand new for 2018 are our Agent Fire Spark sites, which have all the same features and functionality as our custom websites at a fraction of the cost. Seriously, do yourself a favor and just, just check us out. Closing thoughts. Huh, we've reached the end. So guys, I really tried my best here to provide as much value as possible and I really hope you guys feel that I delivered on that promise. If you have any comments, questions, things you wanna see more of or explain better, uh, just let me know in the comments. If you guys enjoyed this, then I've got some other ideas for deep dive type articles and videos that I'd love to explore moving forward. 
For example, I'd love to do a full case study just on remarketing, but I'd love to hear your suggestions first. So with the tremendous success of the campaigns detailed in this case study, we've now launched coloradospringsmilitaryhomes.com, where we're gonna wage all out war, pun intended, on the military relocation niche in Colorado Springs. Now, this is a really tricky niche where we see tremendous opportunity. So another idea is maybe we'll do a case study for that with much more of a Google AdWords focus if enough people ask for it. So let me know and best of luck in your own personal online marketing efforts.